Welcome to Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are white, already to harvest. For over half a century, the Evangelistic Outreach team has traveled across the street, about the nation, and around the world with the gospel message. We're dedicated to the vision of our late founder, Dr. Calvin Evans, to reach the unreached for Jesus Christ. May the love of Christ touch you, and may His Word teach you, today on Evangelistic Outreach. In God's Word, there are just some things that are, that are sure, that are firm, and they uh, require no movement at all from us, and that is the fact that God's promises are sure, they're true, and uh, there are things, the doctrines of God's Word that cannot be moved or cannot be shaken. And so it's our responsibility to stand on those things and make sure we, we don't waver left or right from what God is teaching. And today, uh, the focus of the message is going to be on the fact that there are some things that we just cannot take the lid off from. And that is a powerful message today from Calvin Ray Evans. We hope you'll join us as we play the remainder of that message. And also, we're going to tell you about a very special revival going on this week in Columbus, Ohio. But please join us in prayer today. Father, we thank you for all that you do for us. Your goodness is all around us, and we see it every day of our lives. You bless us, Lord, abundantly with, uh, with just friends that pray for us, and that support us, that uh, are so good to make sure that we are not left without, that we uh, are able to go and do what we have been called to do. And we, we thank you for that, Father. Thank you for that blessing of having friends today. And Lord, we know that there are many that are watching today that need you in their life. There are those that need encouragement and strength, and we know you can give them that today. And I pray the message will speak to someone's heart. I pray for the revival this week in Columbus, Ohio, at Southwest Free Will Baptist Church. Bless us abundantly, and Lord, we'll praise you for it all. In Jesus' name, amen.
Well, for the last several years, Calvary and myself have been privileged to be a part of an annual fall revival at the Southwest Free Will Baptist Church in Columbus, Ohio. John Mead Jr. is the pastor there, and his father, John Mead, was the pastor there for many years and recently has stepped down from the pastor duties. And his son, John Mead Jr., who was his assistant as well, stepped into that role. And my, how God is continuing to bless this wonderful church. It's located on Greenleaf Road in Columbus, Ohio, and we'll be there Monday through Friday evening. Service time is 7 p.m., and it's always a wonderful time in the Lord. They love to worship the Lord. They love for visitors to come in. They'll make you feel so welcome. Always tremendous singing as well all week long. Again, service time is 7 p.m. this week at the Southwest Free Will Baptist Church on Greenleaf Road in Columbus, Ohio. If you are unable to attend, they do live stream all their services. You can go to their Facebook page at Southwest Free Will Baptist Church. You can also go to their YouTube channel and they do have a website as well. So it's a very easy way to uh, stay in touch. And if you're unable to make it uh, in person, you can watch those services live online at the Southwest Free Will Baptist Church. And again, we, we appreciate your prayers and support. It's been a great fall already. The Lord has tremendously blessed. We've seen people saved. We've been in some wonderful revivals. The Spirit of the Lord has just been so free and uh, we're seeing uh, pastors so excited about what God is doing in their churches, how they're growing and how they're seeing uh, things happen. And we so appreciate your prayers because without them, we simply cannot do what God has called us to do. And uh, as a way to say thank you, we always have the free gift offers available and we wanna make sure you uh, get this month's free gift offers. It's called Hidden and Revealed. Two messages, one from myself and one from Calvin Ray Evans, and then also singing from the Parsons family. It's available on a DVD or audio CD. No cost or obligation to you. You just have to let us know. You can contact us at 800-767-8713. You can also visit our website at calvinevans.org or feel free to write us a letter and request that we read every uh, correspondence that comes into this ministry office. And we'd love to hear from you today. 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio, 45662. Well, let's go into the message today that we started last week from Calvin Ray Evans. We hope it's a challenge to you today. Do you know what he's saying here in this passage? The reason that it was such an offense is when they lifted the lid, there's some things you should not lift the lid on. And number one, you should never lift the lid on the forgiveness of sin. They took the blood away. Whatever you do, never take the blood away. Sin is serious business. You don't think sin's serious? Just read throughout the whole teaching of the word of God how serious that sin is. God looks at sin in a serious way. So serious, in fact, that God said he required death for sin to be forgiven. But God also says that if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin. Well, how does that forgiveness come? Does that come through a ritual? No, that forgiveness comes through one thing, and that is the blood of Jesus Christ. When we make our confession, we confess that Jesus is Lord. We confess that he died on a cross. We confess that he offered his blood as a sacrifice for our sin. Well, hallelujah, we confess that it is the blood that covers our sins. So he's saying, you are forgiven 
by the blood. It is the blood that maketh atonement for the soul. Leviticus 6 says and other passages as well. So really what you're doing is you're lifting the lid. You're taking the blood away. And when God looked down, why didn't he see the sin? Because it was covered by the blood. Now, I know everything you're gonna say. I can remember my sin. I know my sin. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not asking you, do you remember your sin? Do you feel guilty of your sin? Do you regret your past? We all have sin. We all regret our past. But thank God, there is the blood between us and our sin. It didn't erase the fact that the law was no longer there and that the broken law was no longer there, that the sin had not been committed. That's not what he's talking about. He's saying God sees it differently than what we see it. The blood covered it all and took care of it all. And the blood has taken care of it all. When we take the blood out of our songs and out of our sermons and out of our testimonies and out of our witness and out of the Bible, when we remove the blood, we have nothing to preach because there is no forgiveness without the blood of Jesus Christ. In Revelation, how did they overcome? By the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. What was the word of their testimony? That the blood of the lamb had covered their sin. That was their testimony. So you never lift the lid on the blood. Thank God that the blood is there. Roger Duncan, what a preacher. Weren't we blessed to have him in this pulpit when he was living? What a preacher. What an evangelist. What a pastor. I remember years ago, Roger and I would always share a lot of sermon thoughts that we were preaching on. And I was preaching a series of sermons at that time on the blood. And Roger probably gave me one of the greatest illustrations that could ever be said about the blood. He had an elderly lady that had gotten sick in their church and he was making his rounds to visit and he said they had already gone through several days of testing and they were trying to get to the source of her physical problem. He said he went in the room one day and she was sitting there and he said, how how you doing? She said, well, Pastor, I don't feel much better. He said, I don't feel too good. He said, have they, have they found the source? No, they haven't found the source of my problem yet. They're still running tests. He said, well, what are they doing? They said, well, she said today, they said they think they know. Said, so they came in and they drew several vials of blood. And when they drew the blood, they said they'll, test that. Said just that quick, she looked at him and said, I guess I'll just have to wait to see what the blood has to say. See, God doesn't care what you say about your sin. It's what the blood has to say about your sin. (laughs) Let's wait and see what the blood has to say. When the devil stands before us and accuses us of everything that we know we're guilty of, Jesus himself will say, Father, this one has been washed and covered by my blood. And the Lord will declare to the enemy, what sin are you talking about? The blood has taken all the sin away. Hallelujah. We ought to be thankful that we are in a place that still loves to preach and teach and sing about the blood of Jesus. Praise God. I've got a lot more. Can I just give you one more? We should never lift the lid on forgiven sin. Now if your sin's not forgiven, you've got, that's a different story. But if it's had the blood applied, you're okay. But can I also say this? The blood not only brought about 
that wonderful forgiveness, but the blood brought about reconciliation. It's a picture of reconciliation. See, man was separated from God when sin came. Oh, I'm about to preach. But when the blood was offered, the blood became the reconciliation. The sacrifice was sufficient to take the hand of a wayward person and place the hand of a wayward person in the hand of Almighty God. Because we who were far off are made nigh by the blood reconciled. When Jesus died on a cross with his arms, arms outstretched and he cried aloud, it is finished. What he was declaring as being finished was the job that he had come to do to offer his blood for our sins. And what he did was he took the hand of each one of us that were lost. And if you're lost today, he wants to take your hand. And with one hand, he took us. And with the other hand, he took the heavenly father. And when he said it is finished, he placed the hand of sinful wayward people into the hand of an almighty God and placed them on a posthumous chest and said, it is finished. Not only did he die, but hallelujah, he rose again to make mediation. He is the only mediator between God and man. That means when you come, he says, Lord, not because of who they are or what they've done, but Lord, based on my sacrifice, reconcile them unto you, bring them back to you by the power of the blood. Amen. Reconciliation. Now, will you agree with this? When we sin, we hurt God. We, I know we can hurt ourselves, but we hurt God when we sin. Here is this loving Savior that made a way for us to be forgiven. And by the way, get this down. If you die lost, you're not going to face judgment because of one thing in particular. The thing that leads to those that will face that terrible, terrible separation from God for all eternity, that place called hell, later known as the lake of fire, the bottomless pit. Hear me now, everyone in hell will not be a murderer and everyone in hell will not be a liar and everyone in hell will not be a thief. Everyone in hell will not be an abuser. And on and on and on we could go. But there's one thing that everybody in hell will have in common. They will have all rejected the blood of Christ and the offering for forgiveness of sin. That's the condemnation that you will not believe. But if it hurts God, can I say this? Sin also hurts others. You don't believe sin hurts others? When you go home today, read Exodus chapter 22. See what they had to do for others if they wanted to really prove they'd had forgiveness of sin because it hurts. It goes to a list of people that have been wrong because of the sin of another person. Your sin doesn't just hurt you. Your actions don't just hurt you. Your attitude doesn't just hurt you. It hurts those around you. If there's anyone here today that you ever think about taking your life, boy, it's quiet now. I'm telling you that spirit is sweeping the land right now. It is. The devil wants to destroy and if you ever think about taking your life, get this in your mind. What you do that you think will bring instant gratification will hurt everybody 
that loves you or has ever been close to you. When you, when you do something wrongfully, it hurts people. So really what happens is at this mercy seat, this reconciliation comes, not only is there forgiveness of sin, but there's reconciliation there. And that means if you lift the lid, you are lifting the lid and removing the reconciliation you have over every person that has ever hurt you and over every hurt that you have ever created to somebody else. Now, am I off base or what? I'm gonna see how brave you are. I'm gonna see, I'm just gonna, I'm, I just dare you to be honest today. How many of you, since you have been saved, somebody, intentionally or unintentionally, have hurt you? Hmm. Isn't that something? I think just about everyone raised their hand. Well, let me just put it in life in general. How many of you saved or lost? Somebody said, did, or caused hurt to you. Raise your hand. Come on, get them up. Somebody hurt you. Of course, you get hurt. There's no way I know the hurt in this crowd today. What I know of keeps me in constant prayer. There's people that's hurting today that you know nothing about what they're going through. Children that's been murdered. Yeah, they're right here, their family's right here. They've had children that's been murdered. People that's been raped, molested. People that have been threatened people that their life has been threatened, people that their jobs have been threatened, people that have been robbed. And by the way, you've got people right here today that have been guilty of hurting a lot of people. I wish I could go my whole life and say I never hurt anyone, but you do hurt people. And sometimes it's always say, easy to say, Oh, I didn't mean to. Now you've done two things wrong. You hurt them and you lied about it too. I mean, we don't want to make it a way of life, but it happens. A lot of you, you came into this church and I'm not scolding you, I'm saying I understand. You came into this church because you were hurt. There's people in this church that people from where they used to go to church told them, we don't want you here anymore. That's painful. Well, how in the world, Tim, can people come in here knowing they've been lied on, they've been cheated, they've been robbed, they've been abused, they've gone through death, they've had loved ones murdered, they've gone through times of sorrow, they have family that won't speak to them, they, they have neighbors that refuse to look their way, people that how in this world can they come into a big old place like this and when they start singing about the blood and about the resurrection, jump up on their feet and whoop out and holler when all of that's going on, how can they do that? Do you know how they do it? Because there is a covering for the hurt and that is the blood. When you lift the lid on the hurt that is there, you can't have victory over it and you become a victim time and time and time again. You say, preacher, if people hurt you, yes, people have hurt me. Well, what do you think about it? It's under the blood. 
it's under the blood. I've still got to live for God. I've still got to love God. I've still got to enjoy the journey to heaven. I don't like what they did. I can't help what they did. But thank God there is reconciliation. You who are one time afar off are made nigh by the blood of Jesus Christ. Reconciled unto God by him. Don't lift the lid on it. If you are here today and hurting, my top recommendation for you and the greatest advice I can give you is to come and get it under the blood. Does that make you forget it? No more than you can forget your sin but it gives us a covering, power. I don't know, I'm just, I I don't know, maybe I'm going where angels dare to trod. (laughs) I'm I'm just sick to death of hearing all this. Love, love, love. I'm gonna preach on the real love of God. Love, love, love. But then they're so unforgiving. I mean, we want God to forgive us of everything. But now you, nope. And when you think you're getting out of it, I'm gonna remind you again, and remind you again, and remind you again. I'm feeling God in this place today. Hurt goes deep. And the only way you can overcome hurt, I know what I'm talking about, the only way you can overcome hurt is through the blood. The blood makes enemies love one another. The blood makes wayward people seek God. Well, what a privilege to be able to worship together with you today, and thank you for joining us. Be sure to tell others about the program. We depend on you being the best advertisement we have to let them know that we're on this station every week at this same time, and we'd love for your friends, your family to tune in also. Uh, One reminder before we leave the air, don't forget the revival going on on Monday through Friday night this week at the Southwest Free Will Baptist Church in Columbus, Ohio, where John Mead Jr. Jr. is the pastor. We'd love to be able to worship together with our friends there in that area. Again, that starts Monday night through Friday night. May God bless you until next week at this same time. Thank you for joining us today on Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are For more information about this ministry, contact us at Evangelistic Outreach Ministries, 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio, 45662, or toll free at 800-767-8713. You can also visit us online at calvinevans.org.